So adult patients with the BALL are challenging patient population and even compared to pediatric patients and these patients are because of physical fitness and other reasons uh, so forth. And CD19 CAR T cell therapy in the space has produced quite remarkable results in very high response rate, typically in the 70 to 80 percent uh, range, which is again uh, uh, quite uh, remarkable. What is challenging is that despite the high initial response rate, the relapse do appear to be quite common. About 40 to 50 percent of these patients will relapse. Labs. So we wanted to take a look at what are some of the clinical factors that's associated with or correlate with the higher risk of a relapse. Specifically, and that's kind of one thing, and we previously reported the disease burden prior to T-cell infusion. So lower the burden of the disease, amount of the disease that you have, you get actually better results in terms of the durability of the remission and survival. Response rate is the same regardless of the disease burden, but the duration of remission do appear to be different based on the disease burden. Now, most of these, some of these patients, I should say, proceed then to allogeneic bone marrow transplant after receiving CAR T cell therapy. So we still don't know whether some of these patients, after achieving a very good response due to this high relapse, some of the relapse rates, whether we should observe uh, without any further therapy, or we should be thinking about more consolidated treatments such as bone marrow transplant. So among the patients who go to bone marrow transplant, we wanted to see then are there better subset of the patients who benefit more from the transplant than not. So that's uh, just what we're presenting at this series abstract, and among, there are no, and it's, it's a small number of subsets, so no definitive conclusion could be drawn, but the one thing that do come out is the patients, again, with a smaller disease burden, and that the patients who actually get uh, less toxicity, especially neurotoxicity during their T-cell therapy, are appear to correlate with a better long-term survival. Why is that the case? We still don't know, and then further investigation is happening to determine uh, kind of who, uh, what sets these patients apart.